What's up everybody? You checking out Audience Exchange. I'm Roland Clark. I'm the real Roland Clark. This is the real Roland Clark right here. And you're checking out Audience Exchange. Get out of man. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm DJ Roland Clark. And you're checking out Audience Exchange. <laughs> I'm a jokester. I like to make people laugh. Because I think in our industry, a lot of people are a little tense. There's a lot of, um, for lack of a better word, uh, hateration or whatever you want to call it going around. And it's not, music isn't supposed to be like that. Our industry is supposed to be, I love you, you love me. We have this kindred spirit thing going on. We all like the same thing. So if I like, if you do what I do, I automatically like you. You know, now if you turn out to be, not a good person, then that's going to be my reason. But when I walk into a room, I like to kind of uh, cut up attention with a good joke or whatever. So I'm a jokester. Um, I'm only deep maybe once a year. <laughs> and any other time, I'm just very light. You know, I get deep in solitude. I don't get deep in my music at all. It's, to me, a song is a song. And I write stories, just like somebody would write a book, or just like somebody would write a movie. You know, I write things, and I try to get it to relate to the people that's dancing to what I'm writing. So, yeah, um, like I'm a, Roland Clark. He's just a regular guy. You know. Man, I got into the music industry, living at a recording studio, basically on the couch. And we were answering the phones for the guy who owned the studio. He's pretty, he's a hippie. So it was basically me and all my friends. And we would, you know, just get knowledge and what people were doing in the studio as far as production work by the clients that came in. Uh, some of the clients that came in were just old school guys like um, The Whispers. Uh, we had the Little Bird come in. We had Ultra Magnetic MCs, if you know who they are. This is just old school people. Um, so we kind of got into it. Well, I personally got kind of into it uh, that way. And then I met a few people who worked at record labels and they asked me for songs and I would write the songs and just kind of unknowingly give it to them. Hopefully they would like it or not. I didn't. Know, I actually didn't know you would, you would get paid for things like that. So when I first started getting paid for doing something that just felt like it came natural, it, it felt pretty good. So <laughs> I just said, well, this is it for me. Like, I could just sit here and write some words down and that's it. So it was, it, back then it was very simple. So yeah, that's how I got into it. It's kind of just put myself in the environment and I guess if you hang around plumbers, you eventually start plumbing, <laughs> you, know? you know? So that's how I got into it. Tracy, um, that's a good question. Um, what inspires me to produce is, is, I mean, it's something that's in me. It's, it's, it was in me from the time I wrote my first song. So there's, there's no one word that I can say about it. It's just something, it's a calling. Just like, a, I guess, a preacher would have a calling to, to, to preach at a church. The person who I'm in most sync with as far as producing is my best friend, Todd Terry. Um, only because we come from the same level of, of people, you know. He, he's a no BS type of guy, I'm a no BS type of guy. And we can sit there and talk about anything and everything but music. So so he's, he's, I'm the most comfortable with him when it comes to music. Because he lets me have my, he just go do it. There's no, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. He trusts me to do what I do and I trust him to do it. Jay, um, my voice has changed over the years. I think, um, I guess in, I'll say in the late 90s or whatsoever, I, I was kind of really into this group called Ten City and I was a little jealous that they were getting a lot of play. <laughs> so I tried my best to sound like that guy. And it worked for a while, you know, but then it got a little old for me. I got a little tired of it and I didn't consider myself a singer. 
So I just started just singing my natural voice to try to make it stronger. So just like working out and going to the gym, anything you, your voice is a muscle. So the more you use it, the more you push it, the stronger it gets. So one day I just kind of like did some things with my voice that I never thought I could do. And it kind of gave me the confidence. So my voice is, is just got strong over the years because I use it more. And I, and I use it in a way where, um, where I'm exercising it. And it just, it just became stronger. And all the little, I guess you would call it acrobatics you can do, I have more control over it. So it's just like lifting a weight. You get more control over it, the stronger you get. My DJ sound has changed over the years um, with the genres. Because I'm not a monolithic uh, producer or writer, I like to write everything from soulful house to deep house to progressive and even tech. So I think the audience or the crowd, when they go to a club and they go to a party, they don't want to just hear that one genre banging at them all night. So I, now, as opposed to having that one genre banging all night back like I used to, I start off probably with a little soulful and I build it up into maybe like a little deep tech and I end it with something big and hard. That's what she said. And, and it, it kind of brings the crowd on the journey with you, you know? And if they come along with you, then that's, those are your fans. They love you. If they don't want to come, see you later. <laughs> you know, you don't like me because that's who I am. So I, I, I try not to appease the crowd so much uh, as to try to impress myself. If I impress myself, the people that like what I do are the people who like what I do. When I'm on the road, I, I try to ask the uh, promoters for a hotel that has a gym in it. I think uh, staying fit is a must from like getting from the car to the airport. If you're running late for a plane, you got to be able to catch that flight. And there was a time when I couldn't, where I had to stop in the middle and I thought I was going to have a heart attack. So I think from that day forth, I, I made it a fact to stay fit and to stay in shape. So even if I have an extra hour in the country that I'm in, I try to like walk for as long as I can walk just to burn off whatever terrible food I probably had. Because we eat like pigs on the road, you know. And if you're a DJ, you know what I'm talking about. So. It's, it's definitely a must to stay fit, and, um, and that's it. You know, you, you, you gotta at least stay at the hotel that has a gym. Try your best. To do. Uh, think about me, but a lot of people just don't know. Maybe a handful of people because he shows up at the Winston Music Conference every now and then. He said, "I'm a twin. My twin brother's name is Ronald Clark, not Roland Clark. Uh, people call him Thela Kobe now." And if you see him, he looks like me. He's just bigger, he's more massive, believe it or not. But you have a twin brother. What do you think about uh, a soulful house or a deep house person making a transformation? Would you still respect what he does in his soulful house? Or would you not respect him because he expanded his world or he expanded his, his, his his, his genre into something else, but still, you know, stay grounded, to say, for lack of a better word. So, how do you, what would you feel about somebody like that? You, you call him a traitor? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know. You let me know. So, that's just one of the things I kind of wanted to know. First of all, I want to thank everybody for supporting DJ Roland Clark. You can find me on Facebook uh, if you want to hit me up on Skype. You just say what's up, it's DJ Roland Clark. Or if you're on Twitter, it's at Roland Clark. I look forward to hearing from you guys very soon. Take care.